um, but uh, I will try to. A lot of my presentations are in with a lot of photographs, which don't need any language. And what I'm presenting here is not uh, just on a personal opinion, but is on behalf of the People's Health Movement of India, the Jan Swasthya Abhiyan, and many of my uh, colleagues and my friends from the Jan Swasthya Abhiyan are here, and I would be speaking on their behalf. Uh, about the Indian Right to Health Care campaign, uh, which was launched by the People's Health Movement in India. Um, I'll just uh, quickly go back to the formation of People's Health Movement in India in the year 2000, uh, as it was formed in so many other countries of the world. In India, we had 18 national networks of people science organizations, women's national networks, National Alliance of People's Movements, uh, Catholic Health Association of India, and so many other national networks came together, formed the uh, uh, process for the People's Health uh, Assembly. Uh, we had national and state level workshops, People's Health Enquiries in about 200 districts across the country. And then we had four People's Health Trains coming from four different regions of the country who converged in uh, Kolkata in a National Health Assembly just before the People's Health Assembly in Dhaka. We adopted an Indian People's Health Charter and decided to form a, a continuing campaign platform called Jan Swasthya Abhiyan, which means the People's Health Movement India. Uh, this is just a photograph from our National Health Assembly, which had more than 2,000 delegates from all over the country. Yeah. Now, why did the Jan Swasthya Swast Abhiyan uh, embark upon a right to health care campaign? The reasons are probably quite common to many other countries in the world. A serious deterioration in public health services, a stagnant or declining public health budget since the mid-1990s, and the situation has come to a level where the public health expenditure in India is just 0.9% of the GDP, which is abysmally low. And accompanying this has been sharp rise in the cost of unregulated private medical care, uh, a rapid growth in the private medical sector, and at the same time across the country, in different sectors, a resistance to the negative social effects of this kind of, these hegemonic globalization and liberalization policies. So when policy is weakened, then the politics of rights must gain strength. Uh, what has been the basis for the campaign? Uh, there are certain Indian constitutional provisions, more importantly, Supreme Court judgments, which in bits and pieces specify the right to health care. Uh, India is, of course, a signatory to the International Covenant on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights, and uh, also certain uh, international covenants which mandate the right to health. Our government is committed to it at a formal level. The issue of right to health and right to health care is a strong popular appeal. And nobody can, in principle, deny it, neither the government nor any of the political parties. And in our campaign, while we, have, while we have taken the right to health as the larger overall perspective, we have focused on the right to health care as a, as a particular campaign strategy. So uh, as you know <coughs> that uh, the 6th of September 2003 marked 25 years of the Health for All Declaration. Uh, and on this 25th anniversary of Almata, uh, we launched our national campaign. Uh, we had a national public consultation in Mumbai, which was attended by over 250 delegates from across the country. Over 60 cases of denial of health care were presented during this uh, consultation. And we invited the chairperson of the National Human Rights Commission, and he heard some of these cases of denial of health care, where people had been denied basic health services. And and their human rights had been violated. So uh, you can see on the left-hand side uh, an indi indigenous person from the Narmada Valley uh, recounting how health services have been withdrawn uh, because a large dam project is being introduced in that area. And on the right-hand side, we have the chairperson of the National Human Rights Commission. And at the conclusion of this, we took a collective pledge to make the right to health care a fundamental right and to carry on the struggle for this. Now, uh, what have been the elements of this campaign since uh, September 2003, and especially in the year 2004, when the main campaign has been uh, operative? Uh, on one hand, there has been documentation of cases of denial of health care. Situations where ordinary people have been denied basic health services uh, in any kind of setting. Uh, uh, it may be lack of emergency care. It may be lack of uh, health care to women uh, in different situations. It may be uh, lack of health care for children and uh, in various public health facilities. 
And at the same time, there have been uh, large scale surveys of the public health facilities, especially in rural areas. And these have fed into what we have called Jan Sunwais, or People's Health Tribunals in certain states. And that has been followed by five regional public hearings in all the regions of the country, which have been jointly organized by the National Human Rights Commission and PHM India. And it has culminated in a national public hearing. So these Jan Sunwais are, have been an innovative campaign uh, a tool uh, in, the, uh, in this process. Uh, there has been uh, documentation of individual cases of denial, but also structural denial of healthcare. We have tried to redefine the issue of denial. It is not just a question of an individual being denied healthcare, but when the health services have become weakened to a level where they fail to deliver basic healthcare, this, this is a structural denial of healthcare. So these, uh, this has also been documented through surveys of public health facilities. And then in the People's Health Tribunal itself, it's like a people's court, where hundreds of community members, uh, uh, representatives come, the testimonies are presented where basic health services have been denied. Health officials are then asked to respond. And they're asked to uh, uh, also tell us why this happened and how they will ensure it does not happen in the future. And then there is an expert panel of uh, independent panelists who give their judgment. And this is widely covered by the media. So yeah, this is just the first one of the Jan Sunwais where a woman is making a testimony. Uh, this is the state where I come from, Maharashtra, where we have had six such people's health tribunals in different parts of the state, uh, not only in rural and, and uh, tribal areas, but also in the city of Mumbai. And the denial of health care is no, uh, it's, uh, no less serious in, the, in a metropolis like Mumbai as it is in the remote rural and, and tribal areas of the state. And just to give a few examples of these people's health tribunals, the first in Maharashtra was in January last year, where more than 700 indigenous people uh, they came. This was just in one particular district. And 13 cases of denial of health care were presented. Lack of care in the case of snake bite, leading to death of the person because the anti-snake venom was not available in a series of centers. A lack of care to a child with pneumonia who had went to two different centers. The doctor was not available. Finally, the child died of pneumonia due to lack of care. Lack of a response to a, a gastroenteritis outbreak where two people died and so on. So uh, these are the kind of testimonies that were presented. In a second uh, tribunal, which focused on women's access to healthcare, which is organized by, uh, the previous tribunal was organized by the people's movements working with indigenous people. This one in, in Pune district was organized by a women's group, which focused on women's denial of healthcare and how women are denied uh, services, basic services uh, in the public health facilities. This is a third tribunal, which was organized by an organization working with HIV AIDS affected persons. And where the focus was on how persons with HIV AIDS are discriminated against are not given even basic uh, care for opportunistic infections, let alone, of course, antiretrovirals or any kind of definitive treatment. And while we were doing these uh, people's health tribunals, we also had a people's survey of the rural health services. And across the state, um, almost 50, 60 organizations associated with the people's health movement, they conducted these collect this kind of a collective survey using a common format. 144 primary health centers across the state were surveyed, and we documented 63 cases of denial of health care in Maharashtra. Now, these people's health tribunals were followed by regional public hearings. And as I mentioned, that the National Human Rights Commission took this issue quite seriously. And then uh, both the National Human Rights Commission and the people's health movement, we jointly organized these regional public hearings in all the regions of the country. The first regional hearing was for the Western region uh, in July last year. And here, we had more than 200 people's health movement delegates from the four states. And 40 selected cases of des testimonies of denial of health care were presented to the Human Rights Commission. A whole variety of cases were presented. And uh, reports on the status of health care in each of the states, based on surveys or based on reviews, were also presented, highlighting the structural denial. And we repeatedly said, we are not just interested in highlighting this particular hospital or that particular health center. This is a structural issue, and it has to be addressed structurally. And all the state governments were presented by their top health officials who had to respond to these cases of denial. And then the Human Rights Commission uh, officials were there who emphasized the health rights and issued a series of recommendations. This is just uh, from the Western Region Public Hearing. Next. Uh, yeah, next. Followed by, this was followed by the Southern Region Public Hearing in August last year, 
where the four major southern states were involved, and again, a series of uh, testimonies of denial of health care were presented. Environmental health issues, uh, mental health care issues were also quite prominently brought up uh, in this uh, southern region public hearing. This was followed by re regional hearings in all the other regions, the northern region, uh, the eastern region, and finally, the northeastern region of the country. Yeah, next. Now, uh, in these series of public hearings, in each of these public hearings, dozens of cases of denial of health care were presented. State level surveys of the structural denial and collapse of the public health system was presented. And finally, we, this was concluded with a national public hearing in December last year. Our central, oh, okay, um, just go to the next presentation. Yeah, just go to the next. Yeah, I'm sorry, I don't have time. Yeah, so in the national public hearing, uh, uh, we had a series of special sessions on different uh, aspects of the denial of health care, and a national action plan was declared by the National Human Rights Commission. Now, I don't have time for this, but I would just like to very briefly present the idea of which has been, uh, this is not my idea, this is the idea of uh, a number of PHM activists from different parts of the world of having a global right to health initiative. Now, we'll be talking about this in the afternoon in one of the workshops. So I'll just very briefly uh, sort of uh, present before you that these are the two global paradigms today. Healthcare is a commodity, oblique safety net, that basically healthcare is something that people have to buy, and governments will give some kind of minimum safety net kind of services, certain vertical programs, versus healthcare as a human right. And why do we need this kind of a, right, a global right to health initiative? At the national level, we have seen erosion of universal healthcare access, weakening of public health systems, unregulated privatization on large scale, and access to health determinants being denied. And at the same time, at the global level, we have seen the global health sector being dominated by vertical, selective, and technocratic approaches, uh, rather than universal access. And this healthcare as commodity oblique safety net as emerging as the dominant model to be implemented through public-private partnerships. So if we need to challenge this dominant discourse, we need to create a right to health discourse at the global level and at the national level to, s to push for universal access systems as a right and also to mount a global challenge to international processes and agencies that are eroding the right to health, such as patent regimes, the influence of global financial institutions and global resource flows. So the right to health must prevail over the right to profit. Next. Uh, yeah, so uh, essentially what we are suggesting is that there should be a global initiative which will focus uh, on the uh, taking the right to health as, as a perspective, but focusing on the right to health care and addressing the role both of national governments and of global agencies, because we'll have to address both of these together if we have to meaningfully raise this issue. And there are a whole range of health rights issues on which already a number of campaigns, organizations, networks are already active. And this is just a brief kind of listing. There are others also. All these existing campaigns, all these existing initiatives need to join hands need to develop a common perspective and focus on the issue of uh, restructuring and claiming uh, health services from a, a transformed health system. And so finally, what could be some of the phases in this initiative? Alliance building at a global level and at a national level by PHM units and other organizations, country level assessment and for accompanied by a global kind of assessment of what are the key factors which are leading to denial of health and healthcare followed by national level dialogues, regional assemblies, and a global convention on the right to health, where we call our governments and also international agencies to be accountable to the people and to answer for the issues on which the right to health and healthcare are being denied. Yeah. Okay, so today afternoon we are having this workshop at, at 2.30, and I invite you, all of you or all who are interested, to come and contribute to this workshop, and uh, where we would be uh, discussing uh, the whole strategy, what could be a possible strategy for developing a right, global right to health initiative uh, focusing on uh, the right to health care. Yeah. Thank you.